All right. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our virtual Doctors' Night Out, and I'm going to introduce our host, Dr. Kellyanne. Hello, everyone. I am your host, Dr. Kellyanne Petrucci, here for Doctors' Night Out with my dear, dear friend, Dr. Tammy Moralja. Dr. Tammy and I are like sisters. We have known each other for a long time and have been through everything in this business and in our personal life for many years. And, you know, you have people that are your 911s, and Dr. Tammy is one of those for me. And you're going to find out why in just a moment. She's an expert on many things. And uh, one of the things that really drew me to her was her real strife and interest to help women. And she knows how to meet women where they are. And she always has these like quirky little catchphrases. And she, you know, do you know that you do that? She has these quirky little catchphrases that really help me learn and understand things. And tonight we're gonna to focus on hormones. But Dr. Tammy is a physician with a passion to help women take charge of their hormone health and happiness. She's the author of The Hormone Secret. Dr. Tammy's unique voice is solely needed today as a woman's face behind hormone imbalances and menopause. So true. These conditions, which can assault the quality of life, are nothing new. Uh, this is what uh, we want to know, and this is what we've been hearing uh, about this whole idea of people being misdiagnosed. So this is why you need to listen to tonight's interview, because a lot of people are facing a lot of different issues. And they're really being led down the wrong path. And so we're going to examine that tonight and try to pull everyone back into hopefully the right paradigm that will set you free of any discomfort, pain, and any emotional uh, issues that you're facing for, for uh, anything to do with hormones. So this is an open forum, guys. It's an open forum, which means that Dr. Tammy is really good at thinking on her feet. She's done a lot on camera and so forth, and she can help you come up with solutions for any of the questions that you have. So we're going to dig right into it. Welcome to the show, Dr. Tammy. So happy to have you. Thank you. It's so great to be here. Love seeing you. You're all really. You. Uh, last time we saw each other, I taped your documentary, which was so much fun. So let's just start out, just talk about your documentary, because I think that's going to be really groundbreaking. Thank you. Well, it's exciting and it's, it kind of ties into what we're talking about. So I do a lot of stem cell medicine. We have a clinic that is just opening next month in Mexico. And the reason is, is I wanted the treatments to be more affordable to people. It's in the hospital in Puerto Vallarta and then my clinic in Seattle. But, you know, stem cells are like seeds and our body is like the soil. And if you take the same seeds and you plant it in sand or you plant it in scrumptious dirt with worms and nitric oxide and all these yummy things, you'll get quite a different garden. And so mm -hmm. you were an amazing guest because bone broth and inflammation and all of these things affect our soil. So whether or not you're getting a stem cell treatment or whether you're just trying to get your stem cells that live inside your own body to operate at the best they possibly could, you need to tend the soil. Mm, beautifully put. So you can look for that. I will certainly be. Promoting. That comes out in November. It actually comes out on Veterans Day because part of the proceeds go to my nonprofit. We treat veterans for free. Wonderful, wonderful. And so this is, a, I don't know if you're a double or triple board certified. She's got all these degrees. That's all I can tell you. And so she's a super smart doc out there and she's looking out for you and trying to let you in on the most innovative treatment. So let's dive into this whole issue that's so common for most women and it's hormones. And hormones can either make you so well and protected and keep you youthful and beautiful, or they can be the cause of just about every downfall a woman has. So talk a little bit about, because I want pe people to picture a story which may they may be able to relate to. You got into this whole deal because you went through a lot yourself. So talk a little bit about your personal, uh, your personal life and how, in hormone imbalance has affected you, but what we really want to know is how quickly were you able to get back on track? So 
I didn't go into medical school in the traditional way. I actually danced professionally as a solo student ballet company. My ballet career lasted for about 13 years. So when I went to medical school, I was much older. I was an adult. And that meant that I also was having babies during residency. And I think this is a prime example of what happened to me is what happens to so many women is that I had my second child so i had two children under the age of three and i was working as a resident which meant that we had to limit our hours to 80 a week (sighs) hours a week (laughs) that was the new law (laughs) and i was exhausted and i kept telling myself of course i'm exhausted how many of you say, of course I'm tired, I'm taking care of kids, I have a hard job, or I'm taking care of parents, or it's stress. We should on ourselves, and we give excuses for for why we don't look, feel, and function fabulously. And I'm here to tell you, stop it. (laughs) You shouldn't be putting up with what you're putting up with. So, I was so tired, Kellyanne, that I would lay down on the floor between patients. Wow. And finally I said, you know, this is ridiculous. I'm an MD. I've done all this extra training in holistic, functional, naturopathic medicine. Why don't I go take a look at the data? Did a bunch of blood tests. And the first layer was fine, right? That four letter word, fine. Mm. And nobody wakes up in the morning and says, gosh, today I want to feel fine. And that's when I realized that the absence of disease did not equal wellness because I was not well, but I didn't have a diagnosed disease. I didn't have anemia. I didn't have a thyroid problem. I didn't, I didn't have something that had an ICD, ICD 10 code that could be given a nice little perfect diagnostic code so that the insurance would pay for it. But that doesn't mean that you're feeling great or that you're functioning great. So I did another layer of testing on myself and I tested all kinds of things that people thought I was crazy, like testosterone. Why are you testing your testosterone levels? You're a woman. And I thought, you know what? It's a symphony. Your hormones are a symphony and you might not really think of the piccolos as being very important, but it really sounds different without them. The whole Mm -hmm. symphony is needed to be balanced and harmonized. And what I found out shocked the heck out of me. I had no free testosterone, none. I was in my forties. I had none. Now we don't need as women a lot of testosterone, but a tiny bit has an outsized role in how we look, feel, and function. And when I optimized my testosterone and I wasn't interested in taking testosterone. I know what you're saying. I don't want to be huge and buff and I don't want to be aggressive. That's That's, That's the pushback. Right turns out there's a plethora of research on how to get your own body to produce more testosterone in nutrition, supplements, sleep, all these things, even meditation, because after the age of 35, most of the production of your hormones, especially testosterone, come from your adrenal glands. These are tiny little walnut-sized glands that sit on top of your kidneys. Coincidentally, these glands are also in charge of all of your stress responses. So our 24-7 lifestyle has got these little guys working up a fury, and they neither have the energy, the time, or the raw ingredients left over to produce hormones that bless your life because they're dealing with what stresses your life. And I have to bring something up. And, and Dr. Tammy, one of the things you said, I hope everyone really captured it. Absence of disease is not well-being. It's not wellness. So really key into that. And I want you to pay attention to that as you move forward. And you're talking a lot about you know, uh, hormones. And, and what I want everyone to know, and, and this is something that I learned from you, 
It's a myth, am I right, to think that the only people that have hormone imbalances are in their 40s and 50s. And, you know, am I right in saying that you're seeing women in their 20s and 30s that have these issues as well? A hundred percent and men too. And it really isn't, you know, we think of hormone issues um, as the decline of hormones as we go through menopause. And then unless you're having hot flashes or night sweats, you think everything is fine, right? That word again, fine. Well, really back to the symphony analogy, it's really about the balance. Mm -hmm. So if your cortisol is up, your cortisol blocks the receptor for progesterone and progesterone is your peaceful hormone. Your friend and colleague, Dr. Oz, many years ago said that progesterone is like the Valium that bathes the female mind. It is the one that keeps you asleep. If you wake up between two and four in the morning, wide awake, not groggy, not sleepy, have no idea, it's usually a progesterone deficiency. And that can happen in your 20s and 30s. It really can, because I know that from so many patients that came in, and I would have to send them to someone who balanced hormones. And, what, and I started be paying attention to things like anxiety. And, and my gosh, so many of them. It was progesterone, but let's like step back a moment. But that's not a deficiency, right? That's a high imbalance of cortisol blocking the action of the progesterone. So it isn't, you're right, it isn't just the exit in perimenopause and menopause. It's about the balance. It's about body. the balance. And you're going to hear that over and over from Dr. Tammy. But I want everyone to get a really clean picture of this pyramid because we're going to be talking about a couple of hormones that I want everyone to understand. First, let's go back to this issue of testosterone because I find this to be really interesting because most women out there are going to say, I am a woman, Dr. Tammy. What do you mean testosterone? So explain how that is, plays such a big role in women and, and talk about what are the red flags that it may be testosterone deficiency. You know, I think that so many, we were talking at the beginning about masquerading, of getting diagnosed with this. In fact, it's really that. So anxiety, depression, um, there's a lot of women who go to the doctor because they're just exhausted and then they get their thyroid checked as if the thyroid is the only thing in your body that has to do with energy. Turns out testosterone is just as important for your energy, your wow. get up and go. Wow. The other thing that's super important is lean body mass. And I'm not talking about how much you weigh. That's not as important. In fact, being skinny fat is just as dangerous as being obese because that means that out of your weight, more of what you weigh is fat than muscle and bone and organ. And so if you don't have any testosterone, you don't have the building blocks to make muscle. So what you'll find is that you'll be working out, you'll be working harder, eating less, and you'll feel like a seal. You'll have a layer over you that you're like, dang, Bernard, I can't see my muscles like I used to when I was in my 20s. Even if you weigh the same, you will notice that your muscle definition is different and you have to work out harder. That's because sarcopenia, which is muscle loss, starts in your 30s. And without testosterone, you cannot combat that. Wow, that's incredible. So even if you study Dr. Gabrielle Lyon's work and you, you know, you're into muscle-centric protein. She's in my documentary as well, the, yeah. stem, the stem Cell Secret. Yeah. I love her. And so even if you follow her work and you're doing the right things and you're exercising right and you're doing protein, if you don't have the building blocks, and who knew testosterone is actually one of them? Yeah. Testosterone yeah. is actually, and I, and I love it. I also want to pick up on what you say because this is really interesting because we hear this word skinny fat and we've heard it you know, for, for a long time, but I don't think people really understand what that means. I think Dr. Tammy, a lot of people are under the, the premise that it just means that you, lose, uh, that you start to lose weight and you are losing more, a little bit more muscle, but it's really a bigger picture than that. And I love how you give the analogy of the seal as you always do with these catchphrases. I love it because you, know, you have more fat than muscle or bone, or, you know, you have more, it, it just, it, the composition is all off. 
explain to people why that composition is so vitally important. You know, um, there's a wonderful singer named Karen Carpenter a long, long time ago. I'm old enough to know her. <laughs> Maybe you are. Unfortunately, I'm nodding my head. <laughs> yes. She died of anorexia, but nobody dies of anorexia. She actually died of heart failure. It's because your heart is a muscle. And her body ate her heart um, because the muscle didn't have enough strength. Your bone, you know, osteoporosis is directly correlated with your muscle strength. And we're never talking to our patients about optimizing testosterone for the treatment of osteopenia or osteoporosis. And it does two things. One is it builds the muscle so that that muscle can actually pull on and create that tensile um, pressure for your bones to get stronger. But testosterone actually stimulates the cells called osteoblasts. So it is progesterone that the osteoblasts build bone. So it's an amazing treatment for osteoporosis and what osteopenia. Flags, With, Dr. Tammy, what are the red flags? How do we know if we're low on testosterone? Low energy, that layer of seal fat, mm -hmm. um, more tired in the morning when you get up than when you went to bed, that you're eating less and exercising more and you're not able to lose weight or you're not strong and fit. Um, brain fog. We have receptors in our brain for testosterone. And lots of people think that they have brain fog because of stress and their busy life. No, 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 no. Anxiety, depression, all of these things. There's also a study out of Australia. Women who had breast cancer who, that was estrogen positive, they couldn't have estrogen or even progesterone because of their history. And they were having horrible hot flashes and night sweats. So they gave them testosterone. They gave them an enzyme to make sure that the body didn't convert it into estrogen, but they gave them testosterone. Hot flashes went away. That's interesting. Right? That's, that's actually fascinating. So we can see, we know some of the things that we're gonna feel. We're gonna feel that tired listlessness. We're gonna feel that seal, that, uh, that seal like body where we're not able to make muscle the way we should. And uh, we brain fog. Brain fog because we have those receptors in our brain. So let's take us to the next hormone. And we're gonna talk about how to test for these in a moment. So stay tuned for that. So the first one, low te testosterone. If you wanna know more about that, Dr. Tammy wrote a whole book on this. And it's really good. So uh, low testosterone, the next one is progesterone. So yeah. we, we mentioned that for a bit, and this is my favorite. And I was laughing so hard when I read your work and you said there, there a fire broke out. You grab your kids and your progesterone. <laughs> <laughs> my husband can run for himself. <laughs> He used to be a fireman anyway, so he's, he'll be fine. <laughs> he really is a fireman. I was, I was speaking in Florida um, a few years ago, and we were landing, and it, I just had this, like, flash of, like, oh, I forgot my progesterone. I'm here for four days. And I was panicked. I was obsessed. I was literally looking up bioidentical hormone pharmacies in Florida. So I could like, I was panicked. Because it's calming. it's calming and it makes you sleep. So let's talk about what are some of the triggers that make people know that, hey, listen, <clears throat> I need to look into this. So if you have PCOS, you don't need testosterone. That's about the only persons that it's a contraindicated, but you do need progesterone. And that's something that actually balances PCOS. The that second- It balances PCOS, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Polycystic ovarian syndrome. Yeah. So there's, there's that, but new or worsening anxiety that often is treated like it's a form of depression, but nobody is checking to see if you have a progesterone deficiency. And I know that targeted pharmaceutical medication can save lives. Penicillin, antidepressants, all kinds of medication. Thank goodness we live in a world. But 
I bet you at least 50%, if not 80% of the time, we didn't have to use that medication. Can you imagine if your doctor checked your progesterone levels when you were having anxiety and depression? You don't have a Xanax or a Zoloft deficiency. Now, you might need it. There is conditions where it has helped, but wouldn't it be cool to find out for sure? that it wasn't a simple progesterone deficiency that's way easier and safer to replace instead of going to the big guns first. Instead of going there first, but how does people, we talked in the beginning about this, this misnomer that people think that you have to be in your 40s or 50s to be low. How, does young, how do young people, when they're supposed to be so plentiful of hormones, how do they become low in things like low testosterone and estrogen? And why are we having them pay attention as well? What happens in our life, in our lifestyle, Dr. Tammy, that we run low, that we run low so, so quickly? Our 24-7 lifestyle, you know, if... It isn't that, that, that common in, in our 20s. It happens, but it, not, it isn't that common. It's shockingly common in the 30s. Mm -hmm. And that's where nobody's thinking about it, 30s and 40s. And really what we don't really remember is that our hormones really are shifting away from our ovaries to our adrenal glands right about mid-30s. Wow. Some people more, you know, some people later, but really your later 30s and your early 40s, if your adrenal glands are busy, to heck with your hormones that are there to make you feel, look, or function great. Mm. There's not enough time, energy, or raw ingredients for those little glands. Little guys. Well, how about estrogen? Because that's the third player that I want to talk about. You always say that, that there's such a fine line that either estrogen deficiency or estrogen dominance, so either too little or too much, can get you in big trouble and it's really bad news. Explain this. Well, and I just remembered, you know, people can take a free quiz in my book, The Hormone Secret. Right. And there's a hormone quiz that actually can give you a really good idea whether or not you might have these deficiencies. But when you have a progesterone deficiency, you become estrogen dominant. And that's bad for a whole lot of reasons. Bad long-term, why? because you're at risk for estrogen-related cancers. Estrogen was never supposed to be by itself. It has a bosom buddy called progesterone that balances out the yin and the yang, literally and figuratively. Estrogen goes up, you get boobs, you get hips, you get butt. It makes cells proliferate. Progesterone says, okay, time to stop. We're all good now. <laughs> so without the progesterone, this becomes this proliferation, and you can get sore breasts, especially right before your period. Do you know why? Because your progesterone goes down. So if you're already low and then it crashes, then you'll feel estrogen dominant. People go, well, I'm not estrogen dominant because I'm having my period. Yes, you are. Progesterone leaving is why you have your period. Mm. Progesterone means progestation. So if it's there at high levels, you're pregnant and maintaining a pregnancy. When it drops, your body sloughs because there's no pregnancy. So that drop leaves you estrogen dominant. So if you have those symptoms, sore breasts, bloating, weight gain, cravings, crankiness, right? those are all estrogen dominance and it could be cyclical or it could be all the time. Mm -hmm. So you really need to tend to your progesterone. How do you test for these hormones? On our website, drtammy.com, we have a home saliva kit. And in the COVID times, that's really the easiest because mm -hmm. we can just ship you this little box and you know, you, you spit and there it is. <laughs> it's yeah. really easy. There's a blood spot kit as well that's a little bit harder because you have to poke your finger and like milk it to get enough blood on the paper so it's a little bit harder or if your doctor will listen to you then get them to test it get them to test and in the hormone secret book there's a list of tests for you to get your doctor to order for you and there's also a whole chapter on how to fire your doctor mm. 
that may be interesting. There, there are there are a point in time for that. So let's talk a little bit about you always go for the natural first, and I know that you're an integrative doctor and you do the best you can with nature first, and then you pull the big guns, as you said, when you need to. So let's talk about foods. What? Let's start with the foods that we absolutely should not eat if we don't want to harm or or maybe. Can you even slow down the, the, uh, your hormones or, or speed them up in any way by, by what you eat? Or do you, can you eat in a way to just be protective for your hormones? You know what, Kellyanne? It's really interesting. It's not just what you eat that affects your hormones. It's when. Mm. And I would say that's just as important, if not more important than the what. Although there are some absolutes like you know, if you think that beer is good every night with dinner, that is just inflammatory, empty calories that really does your body no good and, and sugar. Um, diet things, diet sodas. I believe diet sodas have been delivered to earth by the devil. There are no good thing about them at all. Not one good quality. No, one good quality. no, in fact, if you had to have a soda, if you had to have a soda and you're treating yourself, get the sugar one, yeah. not the diet one. Absolutely. That's a, that's a, if you learn just that tonight, guys, you're, you're off to a good start. But there are things that are uh, like intermittent fasting is so trendy right now. And I think that especially women have to be very careful with intermittent fasting. It's a, not for everyone, and B, if you're a woman, it really might not be for oh, great. you. And if you have adrenal fatigue, then it is detrimental for you. When you eat, if you have adrenal fatigue, and you know there's a quiz in my book, or you can just pick up any book. I mean, there's a million resources about adrenal fatigue. You could learn about it on the internet. But it's really important to know and be aware of, because even how you exercise, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Exactly. But you have to know if you have adrenal fatigue, because if you do, then you know things like CrossFit are not going to serve you. Not at all. And neither is having coffee on an empty stomach first thing in the morning. And I don't care if you put butter or MCT oil or anything in it. That's like waking up your adrenal glands and slapping them across the face. <laughs> <laughs> it's so rude. So your adrenal glands are intimately and importantly involved in blood glucose regulation. Your brain requires sugar. Absolutely. And it will accept ketones, but it doesn't like it. It's a lot of work to get your body to produce the ketones, but it will accept it. You will pass out if you don't have sugar in your brain. It is, consumes far more of your glucose and everything in, that you eat that is turned to glucose than any other part of your body. And it's just tiny, right? But it's greedy for glucose. Your adrenal glands sense when your blood glucose goes down they send an emergency hormone message to the body and they say, ah, she's gonna pass out any second, hurry up, hurry up. Then there's this big surge to the liver, glucagon is released, converted, and then sugar goes back up and everything's fine. So it's about how we get our sugar then, right? It's about how- Yeah, but if you don't eat, there is no sugar. So that is a stress inducing response that you're going to make the adrenals worse and then you expect them to produce hormones to make you sleep well yeah no that's not going to happen what you want to do is you want to have those foods that take a while for your body to break down so that there's not these spikes and so things like having salmon which has got a lot of fat and protein with it is a great breakfast like I why do we have to, right? Love it for bread. That and blueberries, I love. Blueberries. Yeah, and then there's your low glycemic sugar with blueberries, and so that's a perfect breakfast. I feel like I I am on fire when I eat that for breakfast, and nothing can get me down. I'm just I am in the zone all day. It's the best feeling. Yeah, and then you're not burning kindling for energy, right? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> You got you know, the big logs that are going to last a little while. 
talk a minute about, we talked about working out and working out that serves you and doesn't. And I love this conversation because this really is a, an aha moment for a lot of women, the things that we're talking about right now. Uh, talk about exercise and I love your discussions on the adrenal glands and, and talk about how if they are not in order, you can still have that same issue where you get those blood sugar swings and you, you feel like you're going to, people that like feel like they're going to pass out when they work out or they break out to that sweat. Talk about what that, but what that's really, what's really happening. Well, that's your adrenal gland saying, dive, dive, emergency, emergency. This is a huge stress response. This is not balanced. This is not right. And I think that women think that their body isn't the way they want it because their hormones out of balance, right? They don't have testosterone to make lean muscle mass. So they're working out harder and they're trying everything. They're doing HIIT training, they're doing interval training, they're doing CrossFit, they're doing all of these things. Whereas when you have adrenal fatigue, you need to do, you do need to move and you do need to exercise, but you need to build your muscle methodically and slowly and you need to walk. Walking is what we were designed to do and it doesn't stress you it burns calories it gets you in the anaerobic but really more importantly that banging of the the bones helps prevent osteoporosis it's cardiovascular you should be walking fast enough that if you had a girlfriend or another friend with you you couldn't have a conversation that was multiple words without taking a breath you should be walking like you're late for an appointment Mm, I like that. I like that analogy, but that's really important. I still think, you know, weights and resistance are really important. Very important. Very important, but you have to do it to the level of where your health is. Meet yourself where you are. And I think walk, walking for me is kind of the icing on the cake. I feel like the core foundation, you've got to have that resistance for all of the reasons we mentioned, particularly for osteoporosis. By the way, no one's talking about that. They really don't. We've forgotten about that. How yeah. it would key indicator, that is a key driver, a, a key metric for longevity and, and for looking young. It's posture, it's osteoporosis, all of these things. And as a dancer, you know this so well. Well, and I think that women just also target their strength training on what they think they want to have it look like you need to do the whole package ladies you you just do you've got to do your back you've got to do your shoulders you've got to do your biceps you've got to do your triceps i mean i do it i try and i just have oh, to look, you you gotta have do that. your glutes you got to do your yeah. your quads your hamstrings your calves you, you got to do it all and then you got to stretch and so I'm not talking that you have to do, you know, an hour, hour and a half, but if you're not doing 15 minutes of some kind of weight training minimum every day, like just pick arms and do arms one day and then the next day do back and the next day do abs and the next day do legs. You've got to just keep doing it. And if you don't have 15 minutes, you don't have an exercise problem. You got to time management problem you got a time management <laughs> problem that's exactly right because if you could if they had in a pill if a pharmacy had in a pill what you could get what you what could you could the benefits you can derive from exercise you buy it you'd buy it you would so you spend that 15 minutes and really get that done uh, talk a little bit about herbs and supplements and I know that you're you're really keen on those what would you recommend for someone for uh, maybe just is there, is there a package that people can abide by just for wellness in terms of their hormones and, and protecting their adrenals and, and everything we're discussing? You know, I, you know, there's this and that and the other thing. I actually created a little packet called the Female Hormone Boost, and it has a lot of them in there. Um, and you can find it on drtammy.com. But you don't have to do that. I think that there's some key ones that you can even just put in your smoothie. I think of a green smoothie as... A medicine drink. Yeah. You can hide all kinds of stuff in it. It's the best. <laughs> yeah. So get some, you know, unflavored or lemon flavored um, omega-3 fatty acids. And, you know, you can get the fish oil, you can get the krill oil. You, there's all kinds of different versions of it, but you need the omega-3 fatty acids for your hormones. They need that to be born. It's really, really important. And it's so anti-inflammatory. 
my second favorite for hormones is maca. Oh, yes. Macas can be used as, a, as an herb for cooking. You can make maca chicken, but you could also shove it in your shake or you can take it in a pill. And what maca does is your hormone testosterone and estrogen, other ones too, but mostly those ones are carried around the body with a carrier protein called sex hormone binding globulin. And your hormones can't do any work. They're on the bus. They're on their way to work, but they're not doing any work. And what maca does is it takes them off of the bus so that they the can, bus. so it can go to work. And how great, I mean, you can't OD on maca. It's an herb. Yeah, and I've been reading a lot about that and it has a multitude of benefits. And one of the things I wanted to talk about really quickly, and we've been kind of hitting on this, is this idea of stress and the stress that we put our body in. And you talk about it like a Pac-Man. You say stress is like a Pac-Man that goes away and just eats all of our hormones and causes this distress. So I really wanna focus uh, more, a little bit more on stress. So talk about that. And is there anything that anyone can do? You know, I love ashwagandha, but is there anything anyone can do uh, on a regular basis to protect them with stress? I mean, maybe meditation is the best or, or what would you prescribe for someone uh, that's going through a lot of stress and so many are right now? Yeah, and I think the doctors have traditionally said to their patients, you know, you, you need to decrease your stress or you need to manage your stress. Like, really? The toddler's not gonna get their own snack. Your project due date is not gonna change. Your jerk boss isn't gonna become your best friend. Your thousand emails are not gonna be answered by the elves overnight. This is ridiculous. There's no decreasing stress. It yeah. is what it is. But what happens when you put a potato and an egg in boiling water? Same environment boiling water, but one gets hard and one gets soft. Mm -hmm. So it's how we handle stress that is the most important. I like to think of stress as eating. So, you know, stress happens all over us, just like when we eat, our food gets all over our teeth. And if you leave the food there, it will cause problems, cavities, gum disease, heart disease. I mean, all kinds of huge problems. And if you leave the stress on your cells, cancer, inflammation, heart yeah. disease, stroke, right? Very similar. So do we stop eating? No, we can't stop eating just like we can't stop stress. What we do is we brush and floss. So is there something that we could do or take or consume that is the equivalent of brushing our and flossing our cells? Mm. Yes, there is. It's meditation. I wish I could charge $5,000 for meditation because it is honestly the most powerful tool in your health tickle trunk that you would ever have. Just think about this for a moment. You're in your car you're driving and then behind you, you see in your rear view mirror flashing lights and you hear a siren. Your body has a physical response. Your eyes dilate, your respiratory rate increases, your palms sweat, your heart rate goes up, why? Because of the thought that you are gonna be pulled over by the police, just thought. So that means that our thought is a pharmacist. Mm. Our thoughts dispense chemicals and hormones throughout the body. So if your thoughts can dispense hormones and chemicals that make you stressed, could they dispense chemicals and hormones that heal that and heal. rejuvenate? And the mm. answer is yes. And it has been proven over and over and over and over again in reproducible studies, because we now have the science to prove meditation, especially, you know, one of my favorites, Dr. Joe Dispenza, he's the guy that's measuring all this and making it so that you don't have to believe in meditation. There is a cascade of released chemicals and hormones when your brain goes into the alpha theta brainwave pattern of meditation. 
And I love the way he describes it. He says, there is no such thing as a bad meditation. Meditation is just coming back. It's like your brain is a puppy. And the puppy isn't bad because it wants to go find the ball and it wants to go chase its tail and you want to go lick your finger. But when you're training it, you got to have it come back and say, stay. 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 <laughs> and that's your brain. And as, as many times as you bring it back, that's a win. That's a success. That's awesome. So everybody who starts meditation doesn't stick with it because they think that they can't do it or it's too hard. And I even have patients who tell me, almost with a kind of a perverted pride that their brain is too active or too busy or they're too ADD in order to meditate as if it's there's some prize for being stressed out and you know and of course you suck at it you've never done it before it's a skill and you have to do it over and over and I don't care what you think you will be dispensing different chemicals and hormones that will heal all of your cells, including your hormones. Including your hormones. We have so many questions that are coming in. Um, so are there, oh gosh, uh, somebody wants to explain, uh, can you please explain what matcha is? They don't know what the- Maca, matcha, it's an matcha. herb. Yeah, it's a, it's an uh, matcha, and they can buy that already made, yeah. Yep. But it's not matcha. Matcha is green, tea, green yeah. tea leaves that are munched up. That's matcha, M-A-T-C-H-A. <laughs> maca, M-A-C-A, is an herb, or you can buy it as a supplement. Um, yeah, it's it's an herb, but you use it as a vitamin. Are there uh, as hormonal? And the dose, sorry, is five hundred to a thousand milligrams. Five hundred to a thousand milligrams. Yeah. I, so uh, it's it's a root from Peru. Uh, that's what mock is. Okay. Yeah. Are there Most herbs? ancient medicinal herb on earth. Mm -hmm. uh, are there hormone uh, hormonal connections to lipidemia? And to what? To lipidemia. Oh yes, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, lipidemia is not what I mean. We could do a whole thing on cholesterol, a myth buster about cholesterol, because the science says that the naturopaths who say that it doesn't matter are not right. And the traditional doctors in Western medicine who say it's terrible and you got to take a statin and get rid of it completely are not right. Mm. It's the red light on your car. It's telling you there's inflammation. That's all it is. And so the inflammation is normally a cortisol stress response or sugar. That's the most two common causes. Now you have to treat it and there's a way to treat it holistically, but to keep it away, it's happening because of oxidative stress, because of inflammation. Explain and Explain what oxidative stress is because this is a topic I love. Explain because people love this because they don't realize with, with that, again, it ages you. And so many people that are watching this evening, a lot of people that uh, tend to follow my work, they want to know how they can look younger and feel better. So in cholesterol, this is where you can tell I have kids. So I have a, like a whole little cholesterol story. <laughs> so if you think about your, I know. I'm, so funny, I love it. If you think about your artery, um, you know, we have them to our nose and our toes and our heart and through your artery goes oxygenated blood. Well, in the environment, the oxygen is bound together with a double bond. That's the physics of it. And when we breathe, that double bond is broken and we get one oxygen mo molecule with a lone electron over here and another one with a lone electron over here. Anything that has one electron and is supposed to have two is called a free radical. Free radicals are like mentally unstable terrorists. They will go through your body and they will attack, create cancer, create inflammation, anything that they can do to get back to a double bond. They're maniacal. And they are flowing through your arteries and they cause in the middle of your artery, they cause damage and they little divots and like they're, they're going through like this. Mm. They're awful. 
the inside of your artery is called the intima and it's really intelligent and it sends out a message, help, help, I've been hurt. And so the cholesterol, I don't know if anybody, everybody knows this, but cholesterol is the tip of the iceberg. It is the queen hormone. All of your hormones are made out of cholesterol. So tell me how good it is to take a statin drug that gets rid of all of your cholesterol so you can't make any hormones. That's not going to help you feel better or be more balanced. So cholesterol says, I'll save you. I have this beautiful patch-like material and I can just go lay myself on down and I'm flexible and I'm awesome. Here, off it goes. Problem is you keep breathing, right? So more oxygen free radicals keep going by this patch and this patch gets oxidized by the oxygen free radicals. And so it has oxidative stress. Then that beautiful little patch becomes your LDL, which is your lousy cholesterol. Why? Because it's become oxidized. It becomes hard. It becomes stiff. It takes up room so your artery can't be bouncy anymore. So you get your blood pressure to go up mm. and it's more narrow. So it squeezes and then little bits of it because it's hard chip off and it can cause a stroke or a heart attack. So traditional medicine says, well, that's terrible. Let's get rid of cholesterol. <laughs> what about all those hormones that bless your life? Naturopathic medicine says, well, it's fine. We have to just keep it all. But no, that's not the answer either. So there's another thing that happens when all of this stress happens with the blood pressure and all that. The intima says to another message, help, help, I'm hurt again. It's a different kind. And cholesterol says, I'll save you. <laughs> like, hey, no, thank you. You caused this problem. And cholesterol says, no, I didn't. It was the oxygen free radicals that turned us and brainwashed us into becoming terrorists we didn't want to be we're now hazardous material and so cholesterol says fine i'll send the hazmat team that's the h deal so the hazmat team comes down mm -hmm. and it picks up little pieces of that and it takes it to the hazardous waste department your liver your liver says, <laughs> I got wine to deal with. I got cortisol. I've got fire retardant from the furniture she, you wouldn't believe what she ate for dinner. I am busy. So the cholesterol can't get processed and be removed from your body. So it keeps getting more and more and more as years go by. So what do we do? What we do is we look upstream to the problem, which is that free radical. Turns mm -hmm. out antioxidants are like a sponge. They clean up free radicals. So my patients go, yay, I'll just take vitamin C and vitamin E and CoQ10. And I say, oh, okay, where do those vitamins have to go to get activated? The liver. So is that really the best idea? No but your brightly colored vegetables and fruit, especially the ones that are colored all the way through, like a bell pepper or a kiwi is much better than an apple because it's more dense in its nutrients. Those can actually sop up the free radicals. So your green wow. smoothie becomes the most medicinal thing that you can do. And in our house, I serve our green smoothies in a wine glass. That's, that's such a good, I, I mean, I love green smoothies and for all the reasons that you just mentioned, I have to ask uh, Dr. Tammy, we have a lot, that was such a beautiful explanation of that. <laughs> Sorry, it was long, but it's no, a I've never heard, story. I've never heard, but it's so important. It's like, you know, why does that banana go brown? It becomes oxidized and that's what happens in our body and we need to understand this. Uh, can you talk a little bit about, because we are down to the last five minutes, can you talk a little, seven minutes, can you talk about uh, menopause? People want to know, how do I deal with menopause? And then the other question is, if we could just wrap with these two in the next seven minutes uh, and sleep. How do I get, how do I, how do I allow my body to get sleep when it keeps waking up all over the place? So how do I manage my menopause and how do I manage sleep? 
Let's talk about sleep first. We have a whole episode on sleep. So make sure you watch the Stem Cell Secret docuseries when it comes out in November and log into Dr. Kellyanne's um, list so that she will have the link for you. But sleep is not one thing. Are you, do you have trouble falling asleep? Do you have trouble staying asleep or do you have both? And so you really have to diagnose what's going on. And so I think that we are short-sighted if we are not collecting data. You need data and it's never been easier to get a home sleep study. Yes, there's aura rings and Fitbits and all that kind of stuff, but you know, I'm a trust but verify girl. I took my aura ring and my Fitbit and all the home devices that I had and I gave it to all my family members. (laughs) And it didn't change. So I was like, nah, this isn't really very accurate all the time, at least not compared to a sleep study. So ask your doctor for a home sleep study. They're readily available. Now, if you have trouble falling asleep, it's usually your mind or your hormones. If it's your hormones, melatonin will help get you to sleep. And melatonin isn't being produced because we have bright light telling us it's daytime, so our body isn't releasing it. You know, our screens and our lights and our TVs. Yes. But if it's stress, then that gets back to meditation. Quieting the mind, stay, uh, 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 stay, <laughs> you know, that would help you with your sleep. If you're having trouble waking up and if it's between two and four and you're wide awake, it's almost always progesterone. And progesterone is actually over the counter. There's topical creams, but get your test and see whether or not you can benefit from a bioidentical progesterone. It will help a lot. So that's the best thing for sleep. Does, does that help? Yeah, absolutely. I think that breaks it down because you're right. It's so different. I can't fall asleep or you know what? I get up three o'clock in the morning. There are two sides of a coin there. So thank you for that. And menopause. I, I hope I inspire you to not wait until menopause. You know, the definition of menopause is that you have had 12 months without a period. That's all it means. It doesn't really mean anything. So what you're talking about, I think, is when people say menopause, it's like, my skin is yucky, my hair is falling out, I'm heavier, I'm tired, I have hot flashes, I can't sleep, I'm cranky, all the stuff that's like the other side of the crazy coin of puberty. It's, you know, your hormones were coming on, you were felt, you know, out of sorts, and when they're leaving, they are out of sorts, but it's because they're leaving at different speeds. It's about the balance. And so I would rather you start looking earlier, if you can, look in your 40s, and start treating perimenopause. And there's no downside to using bioidentical hormones to feel great while you heal your adrenal glands, because that can take up to two years, and then you can wean off of your bioidentical hormones, but you deserve to feel great now, right now. Right now, and you know, I wanna end with something that I've heard you talk about, you say, uh, don't be fine when you can be fabulous. So let's end with, I want you to tell women, what is it that you want them to know, Dr. Tammy? Because you're such an empowering, you know, empowering voice. I have a challenge for you. Women don't make themselves a priority. And there's almost like a perverse pride and because our identity is often really caught up in serving and providing and taking care of work and people and all that kind of stuff. But it's your turn. It is your turn. And think about this. If you want to meditate, if you want to exercise, if you're going to do something in your life, if it's not got an appointment time in your calendar, I don't believe you. Everything that's important has an appointment time and day that is protected and you would never not take your neighbor's dog to the vet, but you would easily miss your own meditation. You have to prioritize and schedule self-care. Mm, I love it. Self-care. We're all about self-care here at Dr. Kellyanne, and we are all about you, Dr. Tammy. You are amazing. I love you. I love how you- I love you. I love you too. And I love, I mean, can you see how, how 
easily she makes all of this seem. I know there was a lot of questions I couldn't get to. I did the best I could. I read, I uh, read as many as I could. I tried to pack this in with more information. We always have Dr. Tammy on because I know you all love her. So uh, we will be bringing her back. Make sure you check for her documentary on stem cells. It's really uh, very uh, eye awakening and I certainly learned a lot and you will see me talking about bone broth and what you are awesome broth. in it the stem cell secret how to unlock your internal healing system so check it out guys and thank you so much Dr. Tammy we can't wait to have you on again let everyone know where they can get more of you drtammy.com it is a D-R-T-A-M-I. And then if you're interested in your stem cell therapy and the stem cell secret, um, that is U.S. Stemology.com. Like U.S. is in United States, Stemology.com. And uh, we can give you any information that we have. Our online store has those test kits if you want to do some progesterone testing or hormone testing at home with saliva. And that's, we can help you with that with telemedicine. But, you know, you've got a great resource here in Kellyanne and so steeped in the research. You know, I, I love that we've got that Italian connection of how all of, all of that heals and opens healing. So it's yeah. really key. We do. And thank you again so much. And everyone, thank you for joining us this evening. You will see us again next week. Stay tuned for more. Until then, make it a great evening. Bye-bye.